my elderly neighbour's television packed in. It was still working, but no LEDs on the other side of the panel here. Um, so I, I got volunteered to repair it, and I've got no problem with that. But when I took the back off, 25 screws. After taking the back off, this is it. This is all the circuitry that's inside it. We've got the power card, and we've got the general control card. And other than that, it goes down. Well, I'll show you the bits. So we've got an edge connector here, which uh, takes power across and also the LED control. We've got a ribbon cable here, which ducks under here, comes down here, ducks to the side and goes onto the edge of the screen. For the power, we've got power in, mains goes in, and this side of the circuit board is the live side. And it generates two power supplies. It generates 12 volts here via the stack of diodes, and it generates about 40 volts. Or when I initially uh, started testing, it was over 50 volts over the rate of that capacitor. And I think that might be the problem. I've ordered another of these uh, PCBs as a precaution. And the, but they've got a stack of diodes uh, creating about a 40 volt supply for the LEDs that then gets boosted up via this inductor. Note these wire links. This is a single-sided board. Some of these links are actually jumping tracks, but the other ones, like under these L L uh, diodes, are just fins to actually keep the diodes spaced off the circuit board and, and help spread the heat dissipation. And likewise, uh, you'll find that anywhere there's uh, things like, well, over here, there's a little row of... Oh, those ones up there. There's a little row of... Uh, links. The other side of that is a small MOSFET for the switching circuit for this. Excuse the swamped out image. It's a very sort of contrasty image. I'm looking at reflective metal here with the lights shining from above. Let me show you how you get the power card out of this. So there's one screw there and it does rely quite heavily on the chassis of the, uh, or chassis as you might see in America, of the uh, TV for grounding. All this sort of common zero volt rail is uh, onto the metal work. And that's in the circuit board as well. There's no negative rail going across from uh, through this connector for this to there. It is strictly through the chassis by the look of it. So you whip these off. You make sure it's unplugged for obvious reasons. You pull off the mains connector. You detach the LED connector. Notice it's just two wires. And then this circuit board just unplugs. And that's it. And what's in the back? We have the little MOSFET used to uh, boost the voltage up. We've got the LED control chip, which drives that MOSFET, but also regulates the current. It's able to drive several strings of these, but it's, uh, it's basically a regulator that balances uh, sets of LEDs. But in this case, it's not doing that. Um, the incoming supply has a switch mode control chip. It's got a position for a MOSFET here with uh, the little wire links as heat sinks on the other side. Or optionally, as in over there, this MOSFET here has an uh, optional through-hole one on the other side. It's a universal circuit board for different ratings. Uh, so this is a 40-inch telly. I noticed that this one has, unlike some of the other sets, this one has a heat sink on the MOSFET being used to drive the switch mode transformer. Whereas uh, on this one, I guess for larger LED arrays, you'd end up with a uh, MOSFET on this side. Um, really, there's not a, a huge amount to say. There's the incoming supply, there's the suppression, there's the rectifier, there's the smooth capacitors, then it switches. It, it's very straightforward. There is uh, opto-isolated feedback on the back from a little 431 um, regulator chip there to provide that stable uh, 12 volts that's used to power this circuitry. The wiring wise on this, we've got the a little bunch of wires here that goes down to the infrared remote control. We've got a connector here for the speakers, which goes to these little built-in speakers. And we've got this data connector, which goes to these two modules. I'm guessing for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth type connectivity is what these are for. And after that, all the connectors are just on board. All the processing, and these circuit boards are not expensive. I mean, this one, to get a, a used replacement, uh, it was something like 12 quid shipped. So um, I have ordered one. Noting that uh, the initial ones I looked at, you can't just go by the number there. It has to go by the actual 
television model as well because that the difference is that the 40 inch versus the 32 inch the 32 inch has the uh, little mosfet in the back the 40 inch and probably upwards has this uh, bigger uh, heat sink here but this is a uh, remarkable i just didn't realize it had been stripped back so much so i'm guessing well the the three things that are like to go wrong in this that these days it's the LEDs in the back and certainly initially they weren't lighting and I tested them with um, a, a little LED tester and they did light. This thing I think was just quirky, I'm not really sure. It's either the LEDs or this, unfortunately, it did that horrible thing that it just starts working again after you've been probing about, looking for problems. I'm not really sure what it was. If it goes out again, I've, I've or ordered a spare power card. If that doesn't fix it over the LEDs and that's a bit... Yeah, a bit more complicated to change. You have to take the panel off. But after that, uh, the only other bit you can really change if the screen's good is uh, is this card. And again, these aren't expensive because they're so utterly mass-produced. I wasn't aware that everything had just been slimmed down to quite such a degree. The strange shape of this transformer is purely down to the fact that it is a, a low-profile transformer. It's designed to uh, have a low form in the back so the TV can be slim. I was expected to be the usual bulged capacitors and output, not so much the mains, the, the high voltage ones, but the ones that output often bulged. Say, for instance, these ones are the 12 volts that would be uh, driving that. They could bulge and cause problems with the uh, regulation, and uh, they'd probably cause a lot of uh, inter problems with uh, the actual picture and crashing of the processor. This one is the LEDs and that then it gets boosted up and that one goes to the higher voltage LEDs via that diode and then out to LEDs. So these ones would just cause problems with uh, flickery LEDs, I'm guessing, or instability. But interesting stuff. It's very much a board swapping experience. I don't know if there's much point. You do get spares kits, which include this chip and uh, that MOSFET. So I'm guessing the LED drivers are, are a bit of an issue in these. But there we go. Interesting stuff. So I'll give this back to my neighbour and I'll see if it conks out again, let me know and we'll swap that card and see if that fixes it.